Welcome, my friends, to another edition of the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. You might notice I'm on my same shirt because I just got done doing the video on Vanguard's online portfolio recommendations, um, and uh, that left a lot to be desired. I like the ultimate way you find the portfolio recommendations, but actually <laughs> get the recommendations was tough. But as, when I was doing the video, I mentioned this uh, retirement uh, calculator, income calculator that Vanguard has online. I just kind of paid a, uh, a quick uh, look at that while I was doing a video. And I said, when I got off the video, I said, let me go check this out a little bit more and dive into it some. So I dive, I dove into it. Man, it is it's fantastic. And I highly recommend you look at it. And I want to just share with you because it's, uh, it's, it's good. It's a good calculator. Uh, one of the better I've seen out there for sure. Vanguard also, they, they have a couple good calculators I'm pretty fond of actually. Um, and so let's just, we're going to run it. So basically, uh, it's a, you're going to put your age in there. I'm going to say I'm 47, which I am. And I retire at my full retirement age, which is 67. I was born in 1960 or beyond. So my FRA is, yes, right, 67. Good job. You've been paying attention. If I was born before 1960, my FRA is 66 and some months. That's correct. Good. All right. So I say, well, let's just say I make 70000 a year for uh, for simplicity, which is 5833 a month. I had it written down here. I guess I, yeah, I guess I lost it. All right, uh, I got my calculator. There. Good. We'll say I save five percent of my salary uh, right there. We'll say I already saved. I don't know, two hundred thousand bucks for simplicity. We'll just say two hundred thousand bucks. Oops. Yeah, that's a little bit. There we go. Uh, we're gonna say they'll say how much you need of your current income. So I'm gonna click on the learn more. Because this is where it gets kind of interesting. As a general rule, most retirees live on less income than they had during their retirement years, uh, during their working years, often because they owe less taxes and because they no longer need to save. Yeah, that's right. That's two of the big three. An 85% income replacement can be a good starting point when making a general estimate of how much current income you may need in retirement. I completely disagree with that, and I'll tell you why. If you travel widely or own a second home, you might want to assume you could need more in retirement, say 80, 100% is what they're saying. Additionally, retirees may wish to factor in higher health care expenses, so including Medicare premiums. Oh, folks, we talked about this in many, many, many different episodes on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. <laughs> well, here, let me just go to the second part. Or if you have paid off your mortgage enjoy good health and pursue any expensive hobbies, you might spend less than 85%. Exactly. So the big three, mortgage, taxes re being reduced right here, uh, right there. No longer need to save for retirement and taxes. Mortgage, no taxes, and uh, not saving for retirement. Those are the three big things. They always say you could spend more in healthcare. Remember, the biggest expenditure by far, and just go back to my previous episodes on what retirees, retirees actually spend their money on, housing is by far, the, the, nothing even comes close. Healthcare doesn't even come close. Healthcare is a distant fourth until you get to the age of 75, then it becomes number two, but still within spitting distance of the other two, which is uh, transportation food. Food, transportation, and healthcare are all within spitting distance at 75. Healthcare is far and away lower at age 65. It gradually goes up, but none of these even come close to housing. Housing by far is the, most, uh, uh, the biggest expense for everyone in retirement without question. So if you have paid off your mortgage and you're not paying any more into retirement, not saving any more for retirement, and most likely your taxes are low, we certainly don't need to use an 85%. All right. Uh, for comparison, oh, look at this. For comparison, here's, and they say here, but they don't give you a link. Here's how much current retirees spent on average, according to an analysis by the DOL, Department of Labor, BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, Consumer Expenditure Survey of retirees with different income needs. Hmm, where have we heard that before? The BLS Consumer Expenditure Survey. That's right, old Josh. I was talking about that in my other episodes about the income needs that retirees have in retirement. And now, according to the BLS and the CES, the Consumer Expenditure Survey, it drops drastically once you hit certain thresholds, 75, 85, and such. Um, now, 
Aon Consulting 2008 Replacement Ratio Study uh, Measurement Tool for Retirement Planning Assumptions. Um, family with one wage earner who retires at 65, the spouse at 62. They're basically saying if you're if you make <clears throat> 20,000 a year pre-retirement, you'll need 94% of that in retirement. And how ironic that is that your first uh, bit of Social Security replacement is 90%. So remember, Social Security has three bend, uh, bend points. 895, you get 90% of it. 896 to 5397, that's 4502. So the next $4,502 of your AMIE, you get 32%. And then anything above uh, 5397 for your AIME, your average index monthly earnings, you get 15%. So it's not shocking that these numbers right here require basically a, a pretty high percentage of your re replacement income. And Social Security provides a good amount of that, not all of it, but a good amount of that. Does, that doesn't shock me in the least. That's actually uh, <laughs> by hook or by crook, however that came to be, that's good politics for FDR to make sure that Social Security sticks. He recognizes the bulk of the uh, workers out there are on the low end of the income stream. The low end get more retirement income than the high end in terms of their Social Security replacement. And the low end have more voters. Thus, we're going to make Social Security stick by rewarding more of those on the low end than those on the high end. And the low end just has more voters. So it's uh, Social Security isn't going anywhere. It's just not. And people say it's going to go away. It'll be defaulted on. It's just it's not happening. All right. So anyway, so that was pretty interesting. So let's go back. I don't think I'm going to need 85 percent. I'm going to say 65 percent because I'm not going to have a mortgage. And I'll show you something else too. I do expect an annual rate of return of 5%. And I'm going to include my social security. There's no reason not to include your social security, my friends. Please don't fall in this trap of not including your social security. So I make 70,000 a year, which is 5833 a month. So I'm just going to presume I made that for my adjusted average index monthly earnings, my AIME, AIME. 70,000 a year over my top 35 years. It's been indexed for inflation, so it averages 70,000 a year each and every year. My top 35 years of earnings, they take each and every year, they add them all together, year one, year two, year three, year four, and if they add those together, then they divide by 420, because that's how many 420 months in those 35 years of your top earnings. So I'm gonna presume I made, I averaged 70,000 a year for my average index monthly earnings. That's a critical number right there. So now from there, we got to figure out what my PIA is, which will give my social security estimate. So you just go to socialsecurity.gov, you sign in, see what your AIME is, and then you figure out your PIA and you do like this. So 5833, the first $895 of the 5833 AIME, I get to keep 90% of that. So I get to keep 805. I'm just rounding. I'm just rounding. I'm not using pennies here. So 5833 now minus 895. So the next 4502, I get to keep 32%. So I get to keep $1,440. All right. So now we took 895 plus 4502, which equals 5397. And my total AIME is 5833. So we subtract 5397 from 5833 equals 436. And I only get to keep 15% of that. Oops, four, oops, 436 times 0.15, which is 65 bucks. So my total social security benefit at full retirement age, which is at 67, will be $65 plus 1440 plus 805 will be 23. 10, 2310. All right, 2310. And we're going to save and continue there. And you can figure that out easily. Now, if you're married, I'm just, I'm, pretend, I'm assuming that Charlotte doesn't have a Social Security benefit, it's just me. And I don't have a pension. So just for simplicity. So I need, I have 200,000. So let's go back. I, I make 70,000 a year, which is also my average index monthly earnings. I save $3,600 a year towards my uh, retirement. I already have saved $200,000. I'll need 65% of my recurrent income in retirement. I expect an annual return of 5% on this amount of money right here, plus the amount I put in. Um, my my uh, Social Security benefit at full retirement age will be in today's dollars, $2,300 and $2,310. So we click over here and it says I'll need 3792 
in retirement based on these numbers right here. But what I provided for, I'll only have $35.85, so I'll be short about $200 a month. Because what they're saying is, well, well let's read it. Uh, this is what, what you may have in today's pre-tax dollars. Um, this is the retirement income that your current re retirement plan will provide. To calculate it, we first determine how much you have saved by the time you reach your retirement age, in this case, 67. That's your nest egg. Then we'll use a 4% rule. That is, we assume you can afford to spend approximately 4% of your initial nest egg each year in retirement and be reasonably confident that you won't outlive your money. The result is adjusted each and every year for inflation at 3%. This is the income that you'll receive from your pension. We don't have any, you see the yellow, there's no yellow here. So the, the green is from our retirement portfolio. The orange is from social security. This is the estimated social security retirement income you'll receive beginning at age 62 or later. The accuracy of this estimate depends on my AM, my av average index monthly earnings and when I file for it as well. All right, so what you'll need in today's pre-tax uh, in today's pre-tax dollars. This is the estimated amount that you'll need each month during retirement right here. That's what they're saying. I'll need $37.92. We take your current income, calculate what it will be by the time you retire, assuming an annual inflation rate of 3%, and multiply the result by a percentage of income replacement you chose. Then we convert this to today's dollars. All right, so a couple of things. This is pre-tax, pre-tax, all right? And that's critical because the taxes uh, would mean what I might have is $35.85, but with taxes... Uh, I'll need more than that to cover the tax. But here's what's interesting. If $2,300 of my benefit is from Social Security and the rest, we take $3,585, subtract $2,310. That means I'm pulling $1,275 a month for my portfolio times that by 12. That means I'm only pulling $15,000 a year for my portfolio. $15,000 a year plus half of this benefit. All right, so that's going to put me... That's $12,000. That's $27,000. If I'm married filing jointly, I have no income tax whatsoever. So I have $23,10 plus, uh, was that uh, roughly $18,000? So uh, $23,585 minus $23,10 times 12 plus. So I am going to have you know, basically forty forty five thousand dollars a year of income and not pay any taxes on it. Now this just includes me. It's not Charlotte and me, but if it were just both of us, it'd be less taxes as well. So, but you got to think about this. I'm just saying I need sixty five percent of this seventy thousand dollars times point six five. So I'm saying I need forty five thousand dollars a year. So basically, with my Social Security, with another twelve thirteen hundred a month for my investments, I'm right about at forty five thousand dollars a year. Married filing jointly, I pay no tax. Even if I was single, I pay no tax. So if your numbers are different, you got to factor in taxes. I mean, that's a fact. If your numbers are higher than mine and you're single, or if you're married filing jointly and they're significantly higher than mine, you're going to have to factor in taxes, which are going to increase the amount you're going to need um, for retirement because you got to pay tax. So let's see here. So how can I improve this a little bit? So the first thing that jumps out at me so I'm still short 200 bucks a month. I need that $200 a month. So what if I waited to take Social Security till I 68, 2310 times 1.08? That put my benefit at 2494. Because remember, each year you delay taking Social Security from your full retirement age, it gives you an 8% delayed earnings credit. So now I'm 68. I'm going to move this to 68. And that's when I start taking Social Security. And look at that. Just like that, from working either one more year or delaying taking my Social Security, I am now just that one year. I was $200 a month shy before. Now I'm right where I need to be. I need $37.92. I get $38.06 just from doing nothing more than delaying taking, taking Social Security to a 68. If I go back to 67, I still delay taking Social Security to a 68, but instead... I get uh, my I get my retirement at 67, and even that I'm still pre I'm a little bit shy about 30 bucks a month, but I'm still pretty doggone close. The issue is delaying taking Social Security can really make a big big difference, my friends. So let's go back up here and say we're going to delay uh, retiring until I'm 68, which means I'm going to work another year. And let's say instead of five percent, I get six percent return on my money. And look at that! Now I start getting well above. And let's say I retire at 67. 
I go back to Social Security being 2300 So you can put these numbers any which way to Sunday. But I want to show you the biggest thing you can do to increase your retirement readiness is literally t delay taking Social Security. Now, you get more income or investment returns. That will help, too. Uh, but that's not guaranteed. That's not guaranteed. And the guarantee is if you're delayed taking Social Security, that's guaranteed for the rest of your life. So I'm not, I'm not talking crazy numbers here. I'm not talking 20% year rate of return. I'm not talking crazy Social Security numbers. Um, you know, that some people might challenge 65% of 70,000 a year. That might be on the low end. Not if my mortgage is paid, it won't be. I'll tell you that right now. No mortgage, no uh, uh, retirement savings, no taxes. Yeah, I just, I mean, we're, you know, if you're living, you know, you're not making, if you're not living large today, it's hard to imagine all of a sudden you can start late cigars with dollar bills. It's just not going to happen. So, and again, I'm 47 now. I got $200,000 in there now, and I'm only saving $3,600 a month. Retirement can happen, my friends. It can happen. You factor in Charlotte Social Security as well, which would give me another, you know, $1,100 there. It's not going to be a problem. The question is, will this be enough? Right there, 65,000% on 70,000 for me to live on. And I, I don't know that, but I, if you're living on 70,000 a year now and you're not uh, going knee deep in debt and you're just slowly but surely paying off your mortgage, I think you're easily going to have enough money to retire for sure. Just keep doing what you're doing. All right. So Vanguard's retirement income calculator, a big fan, like it quite a bit. It's actually uh, pretty easy to use. I love these little numbers here. Kind of reminds me of my own quiz, my retirement readiness quiz at uh, heritagewealthplanning.com, the homepage, because that way you can just little slider bars. You can mess around with taxes you think you'll spend in retirement, how much you need in retirement, how much your PIA, all those different numbers. So I'm gonna, there's no way I can embed this, I don't think, on my website. Nah, uh, too bad. I'd like to put that on my website. That'd be kind of nice. Huh. I wonder if there's a calculator like such I could put on my website. I'm actually playing around with the uh, tax foundation calculator. They have the tax calculator I use quite a bit in these YouTube videos. And I have that embedded on my website. I'm just wondering if I should put that on the front page or not. So uh, I don't want the front page to be too, too busy. And with my retirement readiness quiz uh, very prominently held in there, adding another uh, calculator might not be, uh, might not be, it just might be too busy. But you know, if you have thoughts on that, let me know. All right. So I'll let you guys get out of here. As always, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Hit the red bell or not the red bell, the bell for notification. And comments are always welcome. So we'll look at uh, heritagewealthplanning.com. Look at that website. Let me know if you think the retirement calculator or taxes calculator would add too much to the homepage. I'd like to hear what you think there. And if you have any thoughts on the retirement income calculator from Vanguard or other tools that you use, I'd love to hear about them. So just put them in the comments below. We'll see you next time on the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.